This video is looking at which is the best attack aircraft in DCS. I've been asked to do something like this several times and I wasn't really sure how to approach it. So whether to do a comparison with other modules or why I think the Harrier is the best attack aircraft or just a video showing the Harrier's capabilities. So it ended up being a mashup of all of those. Now this is just my opinion so please don't be offended if I dismiss your favourite. And whilst I do like to have the odd dig at the A-10, I do actually love the hog as well. So if you do disagree, please don't comment, call me biased or just a dick. But feel free to take the piss out of a Harrier and explain why your favourite is better. Now I'm only going to look at the A-10, the Viper, the Hornet and of course the Harrier as they're all of the comparable fourth generation attack or multi-role aircraft in DCS with the exception of the JF-17 and I don't have that module. I'm going to start by looking at most of the attack roles such as close air, uh, interdiction and strike to show why I think that the Harrier is best overall. And then towards the end, I'm going to go a little bit off piste and look at some of the other reasons why you might want to get the Harrier module. So let's make a start. Most people assume that the A-10 is the best close air support aircraft in DCS. However, it needs to carry all of its toolbox. So for example, a few Mavericks, a few laser guided rockets, maybe some precision guided bombs and some retarded bombs. And fully loaded, it's got a 60 mile radius. That's the distance it can cover inside of 12 minutes from receiving a call. 12 minutes being the traditional standard in the Air Force. And it can stay on station for quite some time. That's all good as long as you have to attack one of these or even these but it's not quite so much use if there is one of these and certainly not one of these as it hasn't got any anti-radar weapons and unless it can climb to at least 500 to 2000 feet it can't really use most of the weapons that it does have. However, the Harrier doesn't need to carry all of its tools. Sat here at our FARP, we can pick just the tools that we need. And it can still manage 75 miles within 12 minutes. And that's from engine off. The Harrier is the right tool for the job. And the presence of SAM systems isn't much of a deterrent. And in terms of endurance, as long as we have a cup of tea and a portaloo, we can stay on station all day. So, if you're a squaddy, who are you going to call? The A-10, which might turn up if the enemy have no defences, or a Harrier who can fight the way to you and have exactly the right weapon that you need. So on that basis, I would suggest the Harrier is the better closer support aircraft. Now I know what you're thinking, the Harrier isn't a seed capable aircraft at all and with its 10 mile range and an inability to filter targets the sidearm is rubbish. Harm is much much better and the Viper with HTS is clearly the king of seed, it's not even a contest. And yes, if you want to fly around at 20,000 feet taking out fixed and permanently active SA2 sites then the Viper is probably what you want. However, this is what happens when four harms are fired at an SA-10 battery with two tells or even at a pair of SA-15s. Harms are large and easy to detect, and so it's very rare for four harms to penetrate, unless we're fewer than eight missiles, or you get well within range of the SA-10. Meanwhile, the sidearm, 
doesn't actually have a 10 mile range when fired at altitude and can reach out to almost 30 miles so can just about take on an SA-10 battery. And this is what happens when four sidearms are fired at an SA-10 site with two tells. Sidearm is much smaller and harder to intercept, so four missiles will almost always penetrate a battery with two tells and can sometimes penetrate three or more tells. As for SA-15s, harm can usually penetrate one and occasionally two vehicles, while sidearm can normally penetrate two and occasionally three. Pull up. Pull up, pull up. But if you get something really well pull defended, up, let's say an SA-10 battery with five SA-15s, five SA-19s and half a dozen man pads like we're approaching here, then four harms or sidearms simply aren't going to cut it. Pull up, pull up. What you need is something that can fly in fast at treetop level pull and loft in a load of JDAMs using a true ripple drop. And the pull only up, aircraft up. that can do that are the Harrier and up, the Harrier. And with 10 JDAMs and two sidearms, that can pretty much eliminate any SAM threats. Additionally, if the Hornet or Viper are carrying four harms, that's it. The Harrier can pull carry up, four sidearm and still have two stations pull for up, bombs, up. rockets or missiles. Pull up, pull up. So, if you're pull facing up, significant up. air defences, once again, it's time to call the Harrier. Battlefield air interdiction is where the targets are not in direct contact with friendly forces, but they could have a near-term impact. So targets are likely to be supply units, forward bases, etc. And these will be a short distance from the front line, but whose location is less likely to be precisely known. If those units are moving, then the Viper and Hornet have a big advantage with their ground radar, but for static targets, then the Harrier has two big advantages. Firstly, its T-Pod is far better than the others. These are views from 20 miles away, and as you can see, the Harrier has a far bigger magnification and image quality, meaning you can find targets far more easily and from further away. Yeah, it tends is okay, whilst the Vipers is pretty poor and also has a small display. And as for the Hornet, its lightning pod seems to have cataracts. But the real ace up the Harrier sleeve are flare hotspots. And here we have some reserve units hiding a few miles from the front line. I have a waypoint in the general area where they've been reported, but trying to find them with a teapod can be somewhat challenging when they're hiding like this. Each of the little V icons on the hood are the heat returns picked up by the forward looking infrared and they are the flare hotspots. Most are spurious returns from ground clutter and quickly disappear. However those that don't disappear and especially those in a group are likely to be man-made objects and especially vehicles and if they're in a group they're unmistakable. There's a group now, and they're almost certainly going to be our target. But even now, they're not easy to spot on the teapod. So, when it comes to battlefield air interdiction, the Harrier is once again, arguably, the best tool for the job. Air interdiction is similar to battlefield air interdiction, but it's typically further behind the lines with larger and more important targets. 
So, large bases and supply dumps, which are likely to be well defended, but also rail and road networks and bridges. And the locations of these are likely to be known and fairly easy to identify. For this role, you really want to be carrying lots of preferably precision guided munitions, like laser guided bombs or JDAMs, while still being able to take out defences which seed operations might not be aware of. The A-10 is really too slow to get so far behind the lines, so it isn't really suitable. And the Viper can only carry four precision guided bombs, and that's assuming it isn't carrying any harms for self-defence. But the Hornet can carry a mighty eight, so long as that doesn't carry any harms for self-defence. The Harrier, though, can carry 10 precision guided bombs, which is even more than the A-10 can carry anyway. And these can be laser guided bombs, JDAMs and even laser JDAMs given the ability to use GPS and laser guidance combined, which neither the Hornet nor Viper can carry at all. So not only is the Harrier a bomb truck, but it's also flexible. Not only that, it can still carry a pair of sidearms to take out air defences. Now, when it comes to dropping JDAMs, only the Harrier lets you do a true ripple release, where all you need to do is hold pickle and nothing else. Not only that, but the computer automatically sets the best release order, so here it's selected target 5 first, then 1, 4, 8, 7, 2, 3, 9, 6, and finally target 10 and each number will go large once in range. So, if you need an interdictor to get behind enemy lines and take out storage facilities, railheads, bridges, bases and to cause disruption to strategic reserves, then you probably want to grab yourself a Harrier. For the strike roll, the Hornet wins hands down. End of argument. It can carry a Harpoon, JSOs, 2000 pound JDAM penetrators and slam ERs which are the coolest and longest range weapons in DCS. Nothing else to say. Previously we saw the difference in the tag team pods during the day, but at night the difference is even more pronounced. Here is the view from the Harriers pod, 9 miles from Kutuasi in Fleur mode with 2 times zoom. We can clearly see an SA-15 being fired at us, but we're going to try and find an A-50. Scanning around the taxiways, there appears to be something there, and zooming in, it's clear as day. All the taxiways, the parking bays and the hangars are all perfectly visible, and any vehicles or planes on those would be easy to spot. We can also see the runway clearly and various other targets. There's the SA-15. There's an SA-9. And we can even make out a Zoo-23. This is the A-10 from the same location with the default CCD view and now the FLIR views and the difference is huge. Changing the contrast isn't helping in FLIR view but in CCD view 
there is a small band where we can get a fairly good image. We can make out the runways, taxiways and parking areas but nothing really stands out and we can't even see the hangars at all here. We can make out the A50 in the parking area but this is zoomed in three times more than the Harrier and it still stands out less. If we didn't know it was there it would be very hard to see. Spotting the SAM defences would be nigh on impossible unless you knew their exact locations. But having just fired a missile, we do know its exact location, but even now you can only just make it out. I'm not going to bother with a Viper as it's utterly atrocious at night, but the Hornet redeems itself a little here. It's still terrible, but comparatively less terrible than in the day, as despite its low zoom, targets do stand out reasonably well. And whilst you might need to adjust the contrast to get the best picture, it's less critical and more linear than in the A10 or the Viper. Again, you're not realistically going to be able to spot those air defences. However, as we know its location, this SA-15 is actually slightly more visible than in the A-10, despite the lower zoom. Pull up. But again, the Harrier has another up, trick up its sleeve. All of these aircraft have the ability to fit the pilot with night vision goggles, which are all roughly on par with each other. But the Harrier has a built-in forward-looking infrared seeker in its nose, and this can be projected onto the HUD. And whilst its field of view is limited, its clarity is far better than the night vision goggles, which allows you to fly much, much lower and use terrain masking far more effectively. Here I'm on an offensive counter-air mission tasked with destroying a parked airborne early warning aircraft. Its position at Kutuasi is random and so currently unknown and I have to fly low due to air defences including an SA-15 which is probably the toughest SAM system to fly underneath. And I can then use the FLIR hotspots to find the target We have a definite target head, it might be a group of vehicles or something large like the A50 and I can't see any other large targets. Bombs away. Mission accomplished. Before we move on to the non-ground attack section, here's a comparison table showing some of the various capabilities of each aircraft. For those who want to do air combat, the Harrier can't do BVR, but you can certainly take on any AI fighter in a dogfight, and even versus humans. Whilst you're certainly at a disadvantage, especially with guns, it shouldn't be underestimated. Whilst you have altitude and energy, the Harrier actually has a good enough turn rate that the pilot and not the aircraft is a limiting factor. 
and you can use thrust vectoring to get good nose position. Now this is going to bleed energy even more quickly, but you might be able to force the opponent onto the defensive and make him bleed energy as well. But you will need to trade altitude right from the start, and once on the deck your options quickly become very limited, and you're going to have to try and force a one circle fight. I'm almost in that situation now, but he's also slow, so I'm going to apply some vectoring to throw the nose around and see if I can get a missile off. And we have a kill. Hopefully by now I've convinced you that the Harrier is not only the best attack aircraft, but it's also the most fun and challenging. Not only that, it's obviously capable of carrier ops and vertical takeoff and landing. Not that you need a carrier or a runway at all, just a hangar. Or even a yacht will suffice. By now, A-10 and Viper pilots are probably tamping about 105s with them being the most devastating weapon in DCS, and they can pretty much overcome any other deficiencies. But I have a couple of real issues with them. First of all, they're nowhere near as effective in real life, and not even close. But that's probably true about sidearm versus harm as well, so I can't really use that argument. In game, SFWs are devastating, so long as mission editors let them be by having the AI sit in a nice big group and letting them get eliminated. But any decent mission editor wouldn't have ground units sat idle as CBUs rain down on them, unless of course the mission editors are Russian. So, if you want to destroy 20 tanks with one bomb, that's fine, but for those who have seen my other videos, part 4 of my series of smarter defences, then they're incredibly easy to simply avoid, even by AI ground forces, if the mission editors choose to do so. And for those who are interested, I'll put a link to what a real 105 does in the description. But do prepare to be disappointed. As much as I love the Harrier, it's not perfect, so here are my biggest downsides. First of all, there's no radar, AMRAM or BVR capability. There's no helmet mounted sight. No long range standoff weapons. But actually for me, the lack of Link 16 is the biggest downside, as it massively limits situational awareness. But Despite those negatives, overall it's a unique and hugely capable airframe that nothing else really compares to. And so if you're considering buying it, I would highly recommend it. That wraps up this video, so if you enjoyed watching, please do hit like and subscribe.